Bust adjustments are the most common alteration in modern sewing, but I don't see them talked about as much in historical sewing. Why, I genuinely do not know. A bust adjustment is an alteration made to a paper pattern to accommodate a larger or smaller sized bust, this area, than the pattern is originally drafted for. And if you have anything other than a moderately small sized bust, you likely need to do one. Hi. I'm Dixie and in this video, I'm going to go over how to do a basic bust adjustment, both small and large, on a modern bodice pattern piece because it's important to understand the concept so you can apply it to historical patterns. Then we will take a look at the same technique on three different bodice patterns from different historical fashion eras. And because this is going to be a longer video, here are some helpful timestamps. But before we go further, we should note, this adjustment is not something you can do after you've cut out your fabric. You have to do it on the paper pattern piece first. This type of adjustment does not work for like the 18th century conically shaped bodices or some of the Renaissance bodices because they're pretty straight through the front of the body. So they're not curving around a rounded bust shape. That's a different kind of fitting thing. Bust adjustments will likely not be the only thing you need to do to a pattern to make it fit, although it can make a huge difference and should usually be the first adjustment you make. I still highly recommend you make a mock-up or two or eight in order to work out your fit issues. Bust adjustments are easiest to do on multi-size patterns. You can do them on one size patterns, but they need to be sized up or down to the appropriate size and all other areas except for the full bust, so like the waist, the hips, height, shoulders, etc., before you can attempt this adjustment. This video will not cover sizing or grading because that's a whole different topic. In order to understand bust adjustments, we have to talk about cup sizes. And I'm going to be using inches in this tutorial, but the basic concept is the same in metric. The first thing we gotta get clear is that sewing cup sizes are different than bra cup sizes. So for your bra, you typically determine your cup size or the volume of the bust by finding the difference between your under bust measurement and your full bust measurement. So for example, if my under bust is 31 inches and my full bust is 35 inches, that leaves me with a difference of four inches or a D cup. Most bra sizing works like this. In sewing, however, cup sizing is almost always calculated by the difference between your high bust, so under your arms and over the bulk of the bust, and your full bust. And unlike the full bust measurement, this measurement is not necessarily going to be parallel to the ground. So again, my full bust measurement is 35 inches and my high bust is 33, so that puts me at a B cup. But the key thing to know is that when grading or sizing a pattern up and down from whatever base pattern block a company starts with, that cup size always stays the same. So the B cup in the 34 inch bust pattern is still going to be a B cup at a size 40 inch bust. The bust does not magically become a D as the rest of the pattern gets bigger. The cup size stays the same at the smallest and largest end of the block. So if your cup size is smaller or larger than the cup size used to draft the pattern, you probably need to make a bust adjustment. Well, how am I supposed to know what cup size a pattern is drafted for? Most pattern companies draft for a B cup. That's a sewing B cup. The big four like McCall, Simplicity, Butterick, Vogue, all draft for a B cup unless it's one of those uh, special patterns that explicitly states it has multiple cup sizes. Indie companies vary, they're all over the board. Check the pattern instructions or their website and size charts. They might state what cup size they draft for or they might include a high bust measurement in addition to the full bust measurement in their size chart and you can compare the numbers. If they don't, you can probably assume it's a B cup. Black Snail and Laughing Moon patterns both draft for Bs. Truly Victorian uses a different means of choosing your size, so please go by their instructions first before you attempt any kind of bust adjustment. If you're using an antique pattern or can't get any information on cup sizes, you can measure your pattern pieces. First, find the high bust measurement by measuring horizontally across the front piece from underarm to underarm. Then find the fullest part of the bust on the piece. In sewing, it's called the apex. It's basically the nipple. Please don't demonetize me. If the piece has a dart, the apex is usually a little bit away from the point. Then measure from just below the underarm to the apex and horizontally across. 
Disregard any seam allowances or extra overlap like button plackets. If you're measuring a half size piece like this, double your measurements. Then subtract the two. The difference is the cup size or close to it. You can also tell whether or not you need a bust adjustment by making a mock-up. If you need a full bust adjustment, you'll notice things like the shoulder area is too wide. The side seams may be pulling forward. You may have gaping at the neckline or most commonly gaping at the armhole with extra fabric, like it wants to be pinched out and put into a dart. Your back might feel tight because your bust is pulling the fabric forward. That's because the pattern is expecting your shoulders and upper chest to be larger in proportion to your bust than it actually is. If you need a small bust adjustment, you might feel like it's too tight or narrow in the shoulders and upper chest, and it may be restricting movement. Your side seams may not be straight up and down, they may be pulling toward the back. That's because the pattern is expecting your shoulders and upper chest area to be smaller in proportion to your bust. Okay, so you've determined by math or by mock-up that you need an adjustment, but how do you decide how much you need to add or subtract from your pattern? Remember those high and full bust measurements? Make note of yours because we're going to compare that to our pattern. And be sure to measure yourself in the undergarments you're going to wear under whatever it is that you're making. Let's say we're using this laughing moon pattern. We know it is drafted for a B cup. Let's say that my full bust measurement is 40 inches and I have a D cup. Instead of choosing a size 18, I'm going to subtract my D cup from a B cup. So four inches minus two inches is two inches. And I need to choose a size that is two inches smaller than my full bust measurement. So I'm going to choose a size 16 to work with. If I had a full bust of 40 inch with an A cup, instead I would subtract an A cup from a B cup, so one minus two, and that gives me negative one. So I need to choose a size that is one inch bigger than my full bust. And in this case, since these pattern pieces are two inches apart, but I only have a one inch difference, what I'd probably do is cut the size halfway between an 18 and a 20. If you are blessed enough to be using a pattern which lists high bust measurements, Choose the size that matches your high bust measurement. If I'm using a single size pattern, I'm going to do what I did earlier and measure the pattern's full and high bust and calculate the cup size. Let's assume the pattern is drafted for a B, just to keep things simple. Then if needed, I'll resize the pattern so that the high bust measurement matches my own. And that is why it's easier to work with a multi-size pattern. Once you've gotten your starting piece, you wanna make a tracing of it and put it on top of some more tracing paper. So you can tape down at like the neckline and shoulder area so it stays in place. And you wanna make sure that your grain line is going straight up and down. We're gonna start by working on a very basic modern pattern piece um, for a few reasons. So modern pattern blocks typically have a side seam that sits at your actual side seam, shoulder seam that sits at your actual shoulder seam, and a waist seam that sits at your actual waist seam. Um, if you don't know where your waist is, it's usually, if you bend over, it's where your flesh bends. And it's important to be able to visualize what this looks like on a modern pattern piece so you can apply it to historical pattern pieces. And this pattern piece has one single waist dart. We don't usually see side darts until about like the 19 teens or the 1920s. And this pattern does not have seam allowances. I will go over what to do when you have seam allowances in a future example. I'm going to show a full bust adjustment on one side of the screen and a small bust adjustment on the other. They're the same idea, but in reverse. So let's remember our experimental measurements. For the FBA, we had a difference of two inches. And for the SBA, it's minus one inches. And since we're working on only half of the front bodice pattern piece, um, because pattern pieces usually come in halves, we're gonna divide those numbers in half accordingly. So the FBA will be one inch and the SBA will be 0.5 inches. First thing we need to do is find the bust apex point and most patterns won't put this on there, which is unfortunate. But in general, it's usually just a little bit away from your dart point. For a B cup, it's usually about like one inch away. Next, draw a vertical line from the apex through the point of the dart all the way down to the waistline. Now draw a line angling from the apex to the armhole, roughly around this area where it starts to curve under. Draw another line from the apex point to somewhere along the side seam. And finally, draw a horizontal line from below the bust level from the center front to meet that first line. Cut along that first line up from the waist, pivoting at the apex and continuing to the armhole, but don't clip all the way through the armhole. 
Leave the tiniest bit of paper intact so you can hinge this outer section back and forth. Cut the line from the side seam toward the apex. Again, leave a tiny bit of paper so you can hinge. And then slice along the third line, but don't lose this little corner piece. Now take your ruler and pencil and you're going to draw another line. For an FBA, you'll draw a vertical line out from the apex onto the tracing paper underneath. In this case, it's one inch. For an SBA, you'll draw a parallel line in from that first line. In our case, it's 0.5 inches. Next, take your hingy side bit and swing it back in. For the FBA, you'll want to line it up along that new parallel line. For the SBA, you'll want to overlap your side bit until it meets that new line. On our FBA, we now have this gap at the side seam. On our SBA, it's uh, overlapping a little bit. Now take that corner piece and line it back up so it fits the new waistline level. For an FBA, you'll have a gap here. SBAs will be overlapped. Now adjust the side piece until that side line you cut matches up again. For an FBA, you'll be swinging out, an SBA swings in, and then tape it down. Start tracing all around your pattern piece. You may need to adjust this armhole curve a bit, that's okay. Now we have to redraw our dart. On our FBA, we'll mark the new apex, which is halfway between these two points. For the SBA, it's also halfway between the points, although you may not be able to see the original point because of the overlapping paper, but it's there. Now measure down from that point a little bit, like between one and two inches. So here's the thing. You almost always want to move your dart point away from the apex a little bit just to allow the fabric to curve over the apex or else you get really pointy dart points. So you just want to back it away a little bit. And the larger the cup size, generally the more you want to move that dart point away because you're going to have more curving. So if you've got like an F cup, you may want to push it down a little bit further than where it is on this pattern piece. And now we have to connect the dart legs to the waist seam. And in real life, you would want to fold this paper and draw the dart ends that way, but I'm just kind of freehanding it for speed. So what we've done here is change both the width and the length of the pattern piece to give more room for the bust, but we haven't changed the length of the side seam, so it will still match up with our back piece, and we haven't changed the length of the waist seam either, although our dart is now larger or smaller. And we may have also adjusted the curve of the armhole so it can curve more around this side bust area. Okay, now let's apply this to a historical pattern. This is a two-way started um, Victorian ball gown bodice, and it spans from like the 1840s to the 1860s. You'll notice it has a much lower neckline, and the shoulder seam is actually further to the back than your natural shoulder. Uh, the same with the side seams, so it comes around towards the back of the body. These darts are also very curvy. They're not just straight lines because this is supposed to fit very closely over a corset. This pattern also includes seam allowances. So I'm going to mark my seam allowances here. And since my center front seam line isn't on the straight grain, I'm just gonna make sure that my grain line is straight. Like before, we'll find the apex. In this case, it is between the two darts up above. And you can even kind of see how they want to point in like a general direction. So it's about right here. Now draw a line from the apex through the left point and straight down through the dart. Do the same with the other dart. Draw a line from the apex to this lower armhole curve area around here. Draw another line from the side seam to the apex. And again, draw a horizontal line down here near the front. Cut along the line through the outer dart, pivot at the apex and continue just to the seam line at the armhole. Then come around from the other side and cut through the seam allowance just to the seam line, leaving a hinge. Now cut up through the other dart through the apex, but don't lose this piece. Next cut from the side to the apex again, leaving a hinge, and then cut that little horizontal line. You'll again mark your new vertical lines according to your increase or decrease measurement and rotate that side piece in or out until the apex point and that little cut line from the apex to the dart point is sitting along your new line. Having two darts makes this a little wonky, but you just want to evenly distribute the darts between the open space. For FBAs, those darts will be wider. SBAs will be narrower. Realign that bottom corner piece so it matches the length and tape it down. 
Again, swing that side bit back around till the side seam line matches again, and tape. Then readjust your dart spacing so it's nice and balanced. Tape and trace the pattern piece all around the sides, adjusting the armhole if needed. Then mark your new apex and your dart point placement. They're gonna be right in between the previous marks. And redraw your dart legs so they curve similar to the originals. This may look a little bit messy, but that's okay. Just go with it. Now you'll still need to make a mock-up and fit these darts over your corset because they need to be adjusted to match your precise body shape and that's gonna be a little bit different for everyone in different corsets. Even if you didn't do this adjustment, you would still probably need to make some tweaks. And having two darts instead of one is nice for people who have really large um, busts because it divides the volume between two sections so the points aren't as pointy. This is an Edwardian or early 1900s shirt pattern by Black Snail Patterns. Uh, technically, I think it's a gimp because it's supposed to go under a jumper dress, but the idea is the same. So this era was known for the pigeon-breasted look. So you have a very full, even droopy kind of mono bosom <laughs> down here over at the front waist. This bodice doesn't have darts. It has gathering, so all of the extra uh, fullness gets gathered into the center front area, and it gets attached to a peplum skirt, and then there's a yoke up here at the top. So you might think you could get away with not doing a bust adjustment for something like this because it seems so full, but really the fullness only kind of starts below the bust. It's actually pretty fitted up here. In this one, I've removed the seam allowances just to make things easier. And since there is no dart, um, it can be kind of hard to guess the placement of the apex. So what I like to do is just kind of guess by holding it up to the shoulder and the armhole and kind of folding it around until you find it. I'm not in a corset right now, but you get the idea. So let's just say that this is our spot. With this style, it's okay if it isn't exact. Um, but we do at least know that it's going to be below the arm side area. Back at the table, I'm again drawing a line from the waist to the apex and then onto the armhole curve. A line from the side to the apex and another horizontal corner line. Snip, 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 leaving a hinge at the arm, drawing a new line, rotating, aligning, taping, tracing. Down here for an FBA, you'll notice a gap. That's basically a new dart. So what we'll do is connect the waistline curve here, and that gives you more volume down at the waist to be gathered up. And if you're worried that that's gonna be too much fabric, just remember that it is proportional to your bust. So if you didn't have this extra bit, the front pigeon poof might look a little skimpy. Same thing with SBAs, um, you now just overlap at the waist and the amount of gathering that you're left with is proportional to your bust size. You know, assuming that the pattern is well drafted to begin with. This is a Regency bodice that is taken from an extant museum example. I had to first size it up so that the under bust measurement matched my own all the way around and then worked on the armhole and stuff. For this, let's pretend that there are no seam allowances. Now this line here looks a little funky, but that's um, the lining of the bodice that goes underneath. So it cups around under the bust and it ends like right at the mid bust. It doesn't go over. This line here is the outer layer that does go over the bust and then this section gets gathered up to fit. Because Regency bodice waistlines can be so short and so high, the first thing I'd recommend is actually to check that the bodice is even long enough to come up high under your bust. And if you're wearing Regency stays, your bust is already probably lifted a little bit extra high. So definitely do this while you're wearing the undergarments you're gonna wear. So what I would do is check that the side seam under your arm is gonna be long enough to come under here. If it's not, what you're gonna wanna do is lengthen it or shorten it if it's too long. And the way you do that is you just take a horizontal slice through the pattern on all the pieces, so the front and the back, and then you pull it apart or overlap it until the side seam is the length that you need it to be. Not all Regency bodices have a proper side seam. Sometimes they reach around towards the back. 
So you want to measure the lowest point of the arm size down to the waistline, and that's your side seam measurement. You can do this on the paper pattern or you can make a mock-up. But you definitely want to do that first if you need to on all of your pieces because it will help the adjustment we do after that fit better. And just lengthening or shortening this bit alone will not necessarily give you enough length to come over your whole bust. So that's why you still have to do a bust adjustment if it's necessary. And again, without a dart or an apex, it's hard to know where the apex is. So again, put it on your body and find it. Um, in general, with a Regency bodice, you know that it's gonna be higher up than the lowest part of your armhole. And really, since I know that this lining hits right at the bust, it's probably gonna be like right about here. Back at our table, our piece is taped and we'll draw our four lines again from the waist up to the apex, to the armhole, from the side to the apex, and across the lower front. Cut again and draw your reference lines. Rotate your sides in or out and tape down. For this corner piece, we can redraw the lining layer lines to make it match up. Trace your new piece, and if you have a very large bust, you might notice that this line down here curves quite a bit. That's okay because this undersection has to wrap around under your bust. Lastly, you'll wanna try on the new pieces to make any adjustments to the neckline. Necklines of this era were very wide and often low, and if they don't fit in the shoulders well, you could have sleeves falling off your shoulders, which is not good. Um, it's also kind of a matter of personal preference, and uh, if you do end up cutting your dress neckline too short, then you should uh, watch my video on chemise sets. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. I will try to answer as many questions as I can in the comments. And if you want to see the dress that I make with that Regency bodice from a museum example, I will be making that soon. So subscribe if you want to watch that video. Thanks again, and until next time, happy sewing.